Buenas, buenas. Welcome to In The Daw. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and I'm very happy to be with you guys after so many months and years. Now, I'm trying to stay consistent and upload more videos here regularly. Uh, I'm going to have a Citrus Masterclass coming up in the next couple weeks. I don't know if it's going to be in a week or two, but I should have it finished by then. And I'm going to either release it on Udemy or my own website. Um, as some of you may know, the In The Daw website went down during COVID. Unfortunately, a lot of things happened uh, during COVID. Um, a lot of many personal things also happened to me during COVID. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into that detail right now. But maybe in a future video we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, but today I just want to bring you guys a video about Citrus, uh, just to start giving you guys a little taste of what the Citrus Masterclass is gonna be uh, about. Anyway, today I want to talk about pulse uh, with modulation within Citrus and how you can use it to make hard salt screeches. So I'm going to show you basically how to create a pulse width uh, modulation inside Citrus, which you can't really do out of the box. So I'm going to show you guys a workaround around it. And then after that, we're going to make a little screech like this. All right, so you heard there, there's a few different variations of that sound. Let me come over to the main display right here. Okay, and we're gonna have the, um, the basic classic screech right here. This is what it sounds like with no post-processing. So there's, that's just citrus right there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, clone this sound. And I'm gonna reset this, make it scr uh, from scratch. I'm gonna cut and paste it here. Now, I have my first operator. Now, what I want to do is to use three operators in total. Uh, the first two are gonna be to create that pulse with uh, modulation sound. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a saw wave. Why? Because with the saw wave, you have this, this, uh, even in odd harmonics. And then with operator two, I'm gonna set it again to saw. And I'm gonna route them both to the filter, right? So they're both modulated to the filter, except here's the thing now. I'm gonna send the second operator to be in the negative polarity or the opposite phase. And now we get no sound. So the cool thing about this is once I move this a tiny little bit, Obviously, we don't get any sound because there's no thing going on to the output. But anyway, here's no sound because of the the filters uh, or the operators phasing out, cancel, phase canceling out. Now, as I put in some of that negative signal in or decrease it, we can hear some of our saw waves, right? So if I keep it like this, you don't get anything, right? Now, what I'll do is I'm going to go to operator two, go to the phase. And check this out. I'm going to change the phase here. And throughout the movement here, we're having slightly different variations of that sound. So what I'll do is I'll create the LFO right here. Go to the next page and use the pencil tool. Delete this um, and I'll select that right there. I'll get rid of the pencil tool and just do a little slight change like that. There we go. And that's starting to sound a little bit more like a screech. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run this through the filters distortion. Let's turn this on and let's put it to maximum right there. Now, FL Studio Citrus has the state variable filter on by default. So you can play around with it, see if you can find a tone that you like. There's also a suite of different uh, filters inside of it. All 
Now for the sound, what I also did was I played around with the cutoff and I'll show you in a little bit what I actually end up doing to it. Um, you can play around with it. Play around with the resonance to give it some talking type of sound. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go into my operator two, get the phase from the LFO, select it, copy it, and paste it into the LFO of my cutoff with a P right here, and boom. We get a little bit more vibration from that, from that sound, from that filter, sorry. Now, the other thing I did was add another saw wave, but this one's playing an octave up, so it's put an octave up, and it's have it come out a little bit, roughly around 40 something percent. And now we can introduce some uh, unison. Now you can use HQ envelopes and oversampling uh, because I'm about to add a pitch envelope to all these operators. Now the quickest way I can find to do it is simply, uh, oh, sorry, I'm on the modulation tab. Let's go to the uh, pitch envelope and select the tab envelope right there and get rid of that. And now what I'll do is I'll select tempo and right click right here and add this to uh, B0. So we're going to go from minus 100% to zero. And in this case, it's 100 and 1,200 cents. So that means that we're doing 12 steps of modulation. We can have it do more like this. And now what I'll do is I'm going to press control C or V right there. It's, it's not control C, it's just V. And it should work here as well, V. And then I'll go back to the envelope on the pitch select it, press C, and then for the um, envelopes, it's a little bit different to paste, it's just P. So there we go, P. And now, check this out. Now I just need to add a little tiny curve to the envelope right there. Let's do something like that. Again, press C and P. Now I know a lot of you guys, even if you're users of Citrus and have used it for a while, didn't know that shortcut. So that's one of the things that you'll find inside of the masterclass that I'm doing for Citrus. Uh, little tips and tricks that will make your workflow a lot quicker and also help your sound design workflow. All right, there we go. We got pretty close to the sound. Now here's the other thing that I do. I add the exact same modulation or the exact same sends again, but to filter two. Why? This way I can basically create some phasing from one um, chain front to the other. So let's do 46 right here too. And then I'll output it as well. And now what I'll do is that the second filter is going to be a, let's see, a, a different filter. So for the other patch, what I did was I used a state variable, uh, state variable filter on the second uh, filter. So let's do that again. I'm going to go to the way shape and add distortion. And I'll go back to this other one and I'll do a low pass with uh, the resonance a little tucked down. Okay. So now what I can do is also go to my uh, mod X or, uh, or keyboard modulation on the cutoff and have it modulate both filters. So now when, whenever we, we hit that second note, which in this case is G, uh, it's gonna sound a little bit different than the F. All right, cool. Now we can also play with the resonance here. That's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna set the flats EQ and then HQ right there on both filters. Um, you don't have to do flat all the time, but I personally like to have the HQ turn on 
also oversampling the center and gives off. This gives me hard quality when I'm working with Citrus. Um, Citrus was made many years ago in 2004, I believe it was coded. So there's a lot of things that are built in uh, that make it so that you can uh, have high quality sounds coming out of it uh, when it's rendering or in draft mode. Draft mode right here is uh, dictates uh, if you have HQ envelopes turned on and oversampling turned on. I have them turned on because I want to know what I'm rendering out. Now, many years ago, computers couldn't handle this type of processing. So it's understandable that um, we would have that turned off. But nowadays, we can pretty much get ahead with, um, go, um, get away with doing HQ envelopes and maybe one or two or four times over sampling. Eight, if you have a 4i9 or higher. So I suggest you guys use it. Okay, so now a little bit of post-processing. There's this plugin called Destructor inside FL Studio. Not to be confused with the destructor from uh, Cubase, which is a different distortion unit, but this distor uh, uh, destructor has distortion, filter, course, and speaker cabinet emulations. So this means that we can have a wide array of different uh, distortions that are all found throughout FL Studio, Blood Overdrive, Fast Distortion, Soft Clicker, uh, Harmer, Harmer Classic, all the Harmer distortions are in here. The Wave Folder, Aperture, Abrasive Crusher. There's many different algorithms here. And as you can see here, when I click through them, you'll flip over and have a completely different um, distortion uh, uh, parameters set up for you. Now, the same thing goes for the filter. We have the filter and we have the various different types of filters are implemented inside of a studio. Uh, then we have the chorus, same, same thing. And the speaker cabinet, same thing, all the speaker emulations that are found inside of the hardcore plugin. So there's tons of, of uh, speaker cabinet emulations and guitar cabinet emulations. Anyway, as you guys can get to where I'm going at, there's an infinite amount of, module of combinations you can have of this virtually. So if I go here to different uh, preset, you'll find that they sound wildly different. Whoops, sorry. All right, let's add the EQ there earlier. And maybe let's do some parallel processing for this one. Okay, let's turn off the EQ a little bit here because it's a little harsh. And let's turn on the Luxverb. Now, I'll probably do another video on Luxverb itself because it's a very complex uh, EQ, I mean, uh, reverb. Uh, it does have some cool EQ uh, possibilities there. That's why I was thinking about the spectrogram. Um, anyway, uh, it's a really nice reverb. I'm really glad FL Studio added it to the arsenal it has. Okay. So let's go with this. I really like this. Okay, let's add this to the beat right here. And let's get rid of the... All right, so that's the sound that we have right now. Now, if we add a different destructor and change it a little bit, maybe use one of the presets over here. I like this comb filtering preset right here. It's called, let's see, uh, is it this one? Yes, it's this preset, let's see, it's, uh, Under filter, I think it's Cumber Operations. Oh no. Yeah, I think it was that one. It was uh, the one before Cumber Operations. Combi Structor. That's a really good preset. Um, like I said, there's so many ch uh, sounds that you can create with just this structure and playing around with the, the filters, the distortion, the chorus, and the speaker. And there's so many of the different flavors and textures from FL Studio built into this plugin that I think it's invaluable for sound design when it comes to screeches. Uh, now, the other thing that I did with um, 
my my destructor over here. Actually, I think it's the one on the the variation over here. Let's see. You can see here, it's moving. So I added a 3D controller, a keyboard controller, and I use it to modulate the filter and also the noise uh, bandpass on this distortion right here. So um, if I click right here, I can link to controller, select the controller. In this case, I want the 3D keyboard controller note, and I create an input of uh, half. So it's a two times smaller increment, right? Accept that, and then I went to the filter, link to controller, and I use the input right there. Again, two times smaller increment. And now you can do this over and over again um, and try out on different uh, sounds. Also did on this one, and this one's going all the way into the input. So if we play back the, the first piece over here, it's, let's see, where, where is it? It's muted in the pattern. Hold on, let's play pattern two. And let's copy and paste that on that pen right there. That along with a little bit of modulation from the velocity right there, makes it so that there's more variation. Now to get the exact screech I have here, um, like I said, I added the, um, the second oscillator and then I, I turned it down just a tiny bit on the second uh, uh, filter in this case because it was pretty abrasive because the second filter I have was a stereo filter that had a uh, the was pretty distorted and then for this one I go to the effects and do a little trick um, where I added the reverb and the delay and then I do like this envelope right here so it's like a gate at first and then it opens up after so basically it's like ducking effect kind of like growth speed um, so it starts out quiet and then gets loud. Unlike the envelope over here, it's it's loud and then it gets quiet. So that's a cool little uh, uh, tip that you could also find in my class where I'm going to cover more how to work with those uh, envelopes. Anyways, so yeah, that's it's so many variations of the sound. Um, let's put, turn on the, the default settings over here. That's, that's a pretty cool tone. Let's de decrease the effects right here because it's a little bit too much. Let's add it here to the to this. And then the other thing I'll do is I'm gonna send this up an octave. Okay, and let's listen to that back. Maybe not, maybe back an octave lower. That's pretty cool right there. Yeah. So you can play around with the envelopes and whatnot. And, you know, if you do a lot of modulation on the filter envelopes, for example, you can play around with the, um, the 80s right here. Let's go to uh, the cutoff envelope right here. Uh, oh, that's the other thing I did. I modulated the cutoff envelope. If I move it from up and down. Slightly different change. Pretty cool. Ooh, 
that that at the very end right there. That phaser filter is so good. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave the video at that. Those are just some creative ideas or screeches inside Citrus and FL Studio. Uh, again, I'm gonna stay tuned and uh, make more videos for this channel. Um, I'm very impressed with the amount of subscribers that the channel has grown. I know Jerry has done work in the past two years since COVID and he's kept the channel alive. And even before he started doing videos again, it was incredible to see that we got 700 subscribers without uploading a single video. So that's just a testament to the good information that we put on this channel and the good videos that we make here. So um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and learned something new today. Um, also ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date for with uh, videos that are upcoming in the channel. And thank you for guys for watching. Once again, I'm Kevin O'Charles with In The Da, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.